All right, we are joined here by Jeff Arison here, CEO of Titan FC here on Punch the Face Radio. How you doing this evening, Jeff? Good, how you doing? I'm doing great, and I know you're doing even better. You're fresh off the heels of Titan FC here this past weekend. Uh, that was over in the Carolinas, man. How, how, what was the energy like there, and how did it you know, feel uh, getting that event knocked out, and, and what really stood out uh, to you as far as some of those performances went? You know, I think I think the energy in the in the arena was unbelievable, and and when I when I watched it back on TV when I got home, you could actually hear that crowd. They were really, really going crazy um, during that event. Um, you know, it was a much bigger venue than than we had done shows in before, so we really stepped up the size. Um, and the thing that that you know people were worried about were, you know, the main event had gotten canceled at, at you know a couple weeks out. But the fights more than delivered. They were they were fantastic fights, and um, the show to me was the best show that we put on since since my regime. So I was really happy with it. And absolutely, I, I got to agree. You had some fantastic finishes. Um, you know, you had the finish bonus that you had talked about during the show, and you had a lot of guys literally going out, and they were extremely aggressive and looking for those stoppages. Hey, did you see that? They were going for that kill. They were going for the finish. Absolutely, you know, uh, and, and speaking of which, you know, Kirk Holobo is uh, up for a um, knockout of the month candidate here on PunchTheFace.com for his, they say, it's, I've seen 15 seconds, I've seen 16 seconds, but whatever, it was quick over Lloyd Woodard. You know, I didn't see that coming at all, I gotta be honest with you, to me, um, I, I figured that fight was going to be three rounds of just war, just three rounds of something that, you know, you don't come out the same that you went into it. Um, Lloyd Woodward is just an incredibly tough, durable guy. Um, Kurt Holobo is a tough, durable guy, never been finished. Woodward, I think, has been finished, I, was it once by, by Rick Horn, I think he's been TKO'd. Mm -hmm. Um so two guys that are just gritty, tough, tough, very high-level guys. And they went out there, and, and you know, uh, Woodward got a little uh, loose with his striking. He came charging. Hollibo countered beautifully, and, and he just took Woodward's head off. And it, it was over, you know. I watched Woodward. His eyes were in the back of his head. And, and actually, when I was in the cage afterwards, you know, he, he was out. And um, kudos to Kurt Hollibo, man. That, that was just an insane performance. And, and absolutely, and for him, it, it sets him up uh, now as being a uh, featherweight titleist. He's going to be fighting uh, for inaugural title for that here soon. Now, any kind of time frame when that bout may take place? Well, so we're going to have um, the Tenino Furia fight um, is going to be September 26th in, in Austin, Texas. That's the next card. Um, his opponent will probably be announced, I'm, I'm guessing, by the end of this week. Um, and, and I think everybody's going to be shocked when they hear who it is. It's a very, very exciting fight. So um, I would assume that, you know, we'll have that fight, um, let the guys rest up, and either I, I, probably January is my guess, or, or maybe, maybe uh, yeah, yeah, probably January we'll, we'll have that featherweight uh, title fight. And as you mentioned, you're going to have, again, Titan FC. That's going to go down here in September. Uh, that'll be down in Texas. Uh, you know, Vinny, Vinny Magalese, so he's actually going to be here on the Titan FC 29 card. Had a couple of minor injuries, kind of delayed him. He was going to be a company guy. Like, how how cool was that that he was willing to step up and get, get on a card after just doing a grappling tournament, has a championship fight, you know, a month later, but he was still willing to step in and help you guys out? You know, Vinny Magalese is... Is a monster, man. He he, and what people didn't know was that I had given Vinny uh, the okay to fight thirty days before that, and he fought thirty days before that. Submitted the guy in the first round, um, and then he he had Metamoris against um, Keenan, and he he strained his lower back a little bit. He still wanted a fight. I, I said to him, you know what, Vinny, I appreciate it, but it, I, it, it's more important that you stay healthy and you come into the title fight 100%. And, you know, he was willing to do whatever. He even he even guest tweeted that night. He, he took over the Titan um, Twitter account, and he did all the guest tweeting that night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, guys like Vinny, man, I, I, I love him. I, I can't say enough good things about him. Yeah, Vinny definitely had Twitter on fire with some of his tweets. Got to respect the company man willing to do that now. 
as you stated, you know, he's going to be fighting for the middleweight championship belt against uh, Jason Brills here next month. Light heavyweight. Light heavyweight. Uh, light heavyweight. Excuse me. Light heavyweight <laughs> title. Now, how important is it for you to see crown champions here with you now taking over this, this new regime here of Titan FC to where they really didn't have that before? And, you know, how important is that to actually crown champions and have guys, you know, be the face of your company and have those belts around their waist? To me, it, it's incredibly important because every promotion has to have their own identity. And how do you have an identity without having champions that represent your, your company? So um, I think between between the finishing bonuses, the, the deal on CBS Sports Network, the, the Zufa out, the, the, all the differentiators that we've put out into into the, um, the space, I think, um, you know, champions are something that I, I, I wanted to bring up into the organization as well, um, just to have those faces of the organization at all times. Absolutely, and, and that's important. Now, you, you know, like I said, you're doing this card here in September. You know, are you looking to do you know one or two more shows after this before 2014's out, or do you have a rough gauge on how many you may be looking at as far as dates CBS Sports Network is giving you for next year, or is that still kind of a little bit too early in this year to kind of start planning yet? Yeah, we're, we're already booked for uh, 14 shows for next year. Wow. Um, and we're looking to to do um, September, October, November, another uh, four this year. <laughs> wow. So yep. pre pretty much we're going to be looking at, you know, something every month here the rest of the year from Titan FC. Yes. Um, and I can tell you the cards are just getting crazier and crazier. I haven't made announcements yet of some of the free agents we've been signing, but just incredible um the talent level is, is just great. You know, since I took over, I've had 10 guys go to the UFC um, on our Zufa Out Clause, which is amazing. Um, and it, it's, just, it's just a wonderful thing, man. I mean, look at Ben Saunders. That's like the ultimate Cinderella story. And, uh, and it happened. We let him out. And he went on to have the first Loma Plata in, in UFC history and, and, and get back in there. And it's just it's great to be the conduit to help facilitate those type of things for athletes. And absolutely, and that's something I could tell when you know after he had, after he was having his bout and after he finished the bout, I saw the tweets from you guys. You you were genuinely happy and, and proud for him and proud that granted he he was out of your card and no longer with your organization, but you were proud yep. and happy for him because you kind of you got his name back out there, built that bus back out to where he could uh, have that opportunity back in the UFC. I, I was man, I, I got to tell you, I, I was. You know, I, I've been in this business a long time as, as the former chairman of Alchemist Management. I've dealt with the highest caliber fighters in the world for years and years and years. That moment with Ben Saunders, um, me releasing him from Titan, helping uh, facilitate him getting back into the UFC, then him having the performance he did um, after years of trying to get back in was just something that, that was exceptionally special. And I will remember that um, for the rest of my career in, in mixed martial arts, for sure. Now, you said, you, you know, as a lot of people know, you were a part of Alchemist Management before you uh, moved over here to Titan FC. You know, as a whole, what in the world got you into mixed martial arts? Because you've made money outside of mixed martial arts in the business world. What brought you to this crazy business? Because uh, you and I both know we deal with some characters. Yeah. <laughs> what brought yeah, you into um, this? I started out... Um, you know, at, at 14 years old, training at Henzo Gracie's Academy in, in Manhattan, in New York. Um, got my purple belt from Henzo. Um, you know, like like everybody else, I watched UFC 1, UFC 2, UFC 3, couldn't get enough. Um, you know, always was was into marketing and, and, um, and, and always loved mixed martial arts and Started Alchemist along with uh, MC Hammer, Lex McMahon, and Nina Sassafor. Built that into uh, one of MMA's premier management agencies, um, you know, uh, in the world. And then I was dealing with the same problem over and over again, which was I could not get my young fighters who were these incredible talents. I couldn't get them fights because no one wanted to fight them on a regional circuit. Vets that lost a couple fights in, in the UFC uh, couldn't get fights because no one wanted to fight them. So I, I had to come up with a solution for the problem. So when when I found out that Titan was for sale, 
And the Titan had already done, I believe, 26 shows at that point, had an established brand, albeit on a, on a regional level. Um, I, I went out, I, I made a bid for the company, I bought the company, I immediately made a deal with CBS, and we put it on CBS Sports Network, and, you know, now everything is just gone from there, and, and you know, I love it. If, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it, because it's just so much work that unless you're on this side of it, you can't possibly imagine what goes into putting on a show. It's just, it's just incredible. But you put all that work into the show for the simple fact of your hashtag and your slogan uh, since day one, since you've taken over now, which hasn't even been a real full year, full year yet, is fans, fighters first. Yeah. How important yeah. is that to not only put that as being, you know, the company's slogan, the company's hashtag here on social media, but actually fully living that because, you know, throughout your tenure here, it, it's legitly happened. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a huge um, there's a huge problem in MMA today with with uh, a lot of promotions. A lot of people say a lot of things, but at the end of the day, they don't do what they say. I think follow through in this industry is something that's completely lacking. And when when I came up with that that hashtag and I came up with the slogan, I meant it. Um, fans fighters first, and I meant it when I said I was going to give fighters a zoof out, and I meant it when I said I was going to give fighters finishing bonuses, and I meant, you know, I meant all these things, and everybody was like, yeah, right, we'll see what happens after a couple shows, you know, he'll start changing things, and he'll start, dude, if anything, I am, I am more aggressive today than I was the day I bought it, in, in pushing these things in the way I believe, look, you know, Ben Saunders, we got back, you know, we let him go and go back into the UFC on, I think, 13 days before my main event. I didn't have to do that. I did that because it was the right thing to do, and I said it all along that those were the type of things I was going to do. And you know what? Rishi and Federopoulos stepped up, and that main event was was an awesome fight. I mean, Mike Ricci, I did not expect Mike Ricci to do to George Sotiropoulos what he did. I really, I, I didn't. I, I did not expect him to just totally, you know, own George Sotiropoulos for three rounds and make it look easy. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, you know, this time next year, what sort of goals do you want to have reach here for Titan FC that you're still working towards? So we're talking about August here, 2015, what do you want to say, okay, we've gotten this, this, and this accomplished for Titan FC? You know, it's funny because my goals for Titan are, are extremely lofty because I'm, I'm in competition with myself. So what can I do to, to better this organization? Who can I bring in to make the organization better than it was the day before? So every day, every show, every hour is, is um, trial and testament to, to what we're doing and, and how we're trying to grow the company. So if you're asking me where I think the company will be in, in a year from now, I think that we take um, state claim to a solid number two in the industry. Um, I don't view anybody else as my competitor. They can do whatever they want to do. It's not my issue. Let them let them run around all day and have fun. I, I think it's great that there's other promotions. Um, I do not have the, the um, aspiration to go head-to-head -head with Zufa. It's a losing proposition from day one. It makes no business sense, and quite frankly, I can run an organization and have a lot more fun with it um, instead of trying to compete with Zufa. I can, I can have fun and make the promotion the way I want it and do the types of things and then and feed off to, to uh, fighters should they want to go. And, you know, it's not always going to be a case where they want to, but should they want to, they always have that opportunity. So um, I think to, to put a clear stake at number two, um, and hopefully by then I'm looking to be on an even bigger platform uh, on, on the network. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> that would be awesome. I mean, and I would even say this. I would love to have a Viacom Super Show. You guys, Bellator. I've thrown it out the, there already. You both I, the I, I'm, I'm a brother. firm believer in, in, uh, in that. If, if, if I have great talent and other uh, promotions have great talent, why not give fans super fights? that they wouldn't get a chance to see. Why not have that happen? I, I would I would do that any day of the week, you know? I, I would I would relish the opportunity to do that. I'm open to it, you know. 
World Series challenge, Bellator, this one challenge, that one. I'm putting it out there. If somebody wants to do a show and they want to do a, a show, a super fight for the fans, and it's, it makes sense, I mean, I'm down all day, every day. Well, that's something I would gladly push to see because we need super fights. We need, need big fights. We need more media attention to the sport of mixed martial arts. More media attention means more sponsors, which means Absolutely. more money for the fighters, which means more money for the companies. And we all love the money. That's the one thing we all love. Yeah. We love the money. We love the money. Absolutely. That, that's why that finishing bonus is so important. I mean, if you watch that event, you saw how those guys were literally laying it out on the line. They were going for the finish. They could have played the tape. They could have wrote it out. They could have been done. They didn't. Every one of those guys went for the finish. Absolutely. And that's why I'm a big supporter here of Titan FC here on Punch of the Face Radio. I know you're, we're going to have guys here from Titan FC 30 on the show here in the coming weeks. But, Jeff, we appreciate you taking out time. The head honcho himself coming on representing the company. We, we do appreciate that. And like I said, man, your fighters, your your team, your, your guys are always welcome here on the show. I appreciate what you're doing and the movement you're doing here in the sport of mixed martial arts. Always a pleasure. And, and the one thing I can promise is we will always continue doing uh, what we're doing. And we only look to get better on every single show. So I, I invite the fans to keep tuning in because my number one goal is to treat them to the best show of, of mixed martial arts on that evening, for sure. Absolutely. And the fans can keep uh, tabs on everything that's going on with Titan FC at TitanFighting.com. And also on Twitter, it's the same thing. It's Titan Fighting. So fans, make sure you go to the website, follow them on Twitter. Again, Jeff, we appreciate you taking our time with us here this evening on Punch the Face Radio. God bless and the best of success going forward. And I'll be tuning here here September 26th, Titan FC 30, back on CBS Sports Network. Thank you. All right, thank you.